Good evening and thanks for joining us here on ORP TV. I'm Craig Stagner coming to you from the Rad Auto Lift Studio in Nixon, Missouri. It is Sunday, October 20th. Lebanon Midway Speedway in action last night. The Bud Perry Memorial. This is a big event that they have every year. Last night, the B Mod class, Tony Jackson Jr. with the win, followed by Dylan McCowan and Tyler Knudsen. The Pure Stock class, he's Mark Simon with another victory, Sam McDaniel second, and Mike Piercy third. The Midwest Mods, Rob Muhlenberger with the win, Colt Cheever second, and Brian White third. Street Stocks, Brandon Dunham with the win, Justin McDowell second, and Josh Halbrook third. The Hornet class, Cheyenne Bowman with another victory. Cheyenne has absolutely been just dominant in this Hornets class this year. Uh, she was your season champion. Great to see Cheyenne doing so well representing the women there at the racetrack in the Hornet class. Jeff Helton is second in that, and Alex Thomas is third. Now, yesterday, Hooter Holler had their ATV dirt drags. This is a lot of fun. If you've ever seen any of the ATV dirt drags, this is really something to see. It's unbelievable how fast the quads are. They were running quads, I think some doom buggies, side-by-sides. They had it all going yesterday. The class winners there, Josh Cook, Chris Inman, Thomas Clark, Jason Cooper, and Rodney Barnes. Congratulations to them. Springfield Raceway yesterday had a big event. This was their breast cancer awareness. I saw that a lot of pink represented there on their uh, on their track and with their flyers. The USRA B Mod winner Jackie Dalton, followed by Caden Stacy and Corey Johnson is third. The IMCA A Mods Ken Schrader comes down. I don't know if this guy's ever going to retire. Um, he has so many victories this class. Still comes down and does great. Uh, meeting all the fans, signing autographs, taking photos. Really a lot of fun. If you haven't got out to meet Ken Schrader, you want to do that. Uh, he takes the win here. Mitch Keeter second and Cody Jolly third. Pure Stock, Robert High, Waylon Dimmitt, and Tyrell Jones, your top three. Midwest Mod, the A class. Jared Martin with the win. Scott Campbell second and Jared McIntyre third. The Midwest Mod B class. Trent Robinson with the win. Rick Lampy second and Jonathan Dean third. The Legends class, Richard Powell with the win, Rodney Baird second, and Steve Harshbarger third. The Mini Late Models, Wyatt Sofa with the win, Scott Sofa second, and Tom Scroggins third. Your Mini Stock, Travis Maggard with the win, Dakota Hardesty second, and Jacob Purr your third. Lake Ozark Speedway had their, I believe it's their last event of the year. This was uh, the Outlaws class. The Power Eye Race Saver Sprint class. Your winner, Jack Potter, followed by Kenny Potter, Michael Stein, third. Fourth was Mike Moore, and fifth, Jordan Welsh. The 410 Sprint Weaned class. The results were still showing pending, so we didn't have those. However, I did see that the winner was David Gravel. Uh, big, I know that that was a big turnout there for that. That's a great event at Lake Ozark Speedway. AMA Supercross got started last night. Now this event is quite a bit separate from the regular season. Part of that is so that the riders that can come out, since it's not exactly, it doesn't count towards the regular season. So if you did have some kind of trouble or got hurt, you know, you wouldn't want, if it was the week before, you would have a hard time getting these riders because it's a chance of injury. However, I did notice that Team KTM basically set this event out. There was no defending Supercross champion Cody Webb. Marvin Muskin was gone. Um, there was a lot of the KTM riders that were missing. The only KTM rider we saw was Benny Bloss. Um, Honda, Ken Roxon skipped this event too. Other than that, uh, you had a lot of your big names. You had Eli Tomac, who was just coming off of his outdoor championship. And the debut of the 250 rider who just wrecked and just missed winning a championship last year in the 250 class, Adam Cianciarulo on the 450. Uh, you also had the return of Malcolm Stewart, a little brother to James Bubba Stewart. Malcolm had not really reached his potential. He was just starting to get there and last year had a big wreck, broke his leg, uh, missed a lot of the year, spent the off season getting bigger, stronger, faster, uh, and switching over to Honda. Now you also 
had uh, a lot of the other riders there for this, but just with the exception of the KTM team and Ken Roxon, this event is three motos. If you win one, two, and three, it's a million dollars. If you are the overall winner as a normal event, it's a hundred thousand. I, I may have been reading too much into this, but it didn't look to me like Eli Tomac was too thrilled with this performance by Adam C. and Cerullo because he looked really fast. Uh, what to note here is that C. and Cerullo takes home $100,000, Eli Tomac second, Malcolm Stewart third for the night, Vince Freezy fourth, and then Tim Gatcher fifth. Things to note this year, Cine Cerullo is going to be a real contender for this series. Malcolm Stewart looked better than I've ever seen him, and Vince Freezy made enormous strides this year. And the Kawasaki's are as lime green as you have ever seen. I don't know how well you can see it in this picture, but they really changed from that kind of uh, monster energy dark green to a really lime green. Uh, Kawasaki's going to be tough to beat this year with the two of them. Xfinity in Kansas Speedway yesterday. Just a few races left for them. Three races left. Brandon Jones takes the win. Tyler Reddick second. Chase Briscoe third. Michael Annette fourth. And Justin Algar fifth. What you may not have saw was the MMA event that happened on Pitt Road. Um... Cole Custer, it, it was funny hearing them talk afterwards, the description. You can see what police officers are dealing with anytime they go to a scene because you have both of them describing what happened and then there was a video surfaced of what really happened. Uh, to hear Cole Custer say, he just went up and put his hand real nicely on Tyler Reddick's shoulder to ask him about running him up the, the track and uh, then said Reddick lost his mind. Well, the video surfaced, and it was just a free-for-all. There was no, didn't seem to be any polite little, pardon me, it was a fight. And there was about 10 or 12 people mixed up in this. Um, apparently, Tyler Reddick, Cole Custer felt like the Reddick had run him up the track. The reason they are so hot there is the point standings. Christopher Bell, who didn't finish in the top five yesterday, is your points leader with three races left. Cole Custer, 11 points back. Tyler Reddick, 12 points back. After that, Justin Allgaier is fourth, but he's 47 points back. Um, those three are really tight, and Custer and Reddick are one point apart. So this is something to keep an eye on. Next week, they're at Texas Motor Speedway, then Phoenix, and then Homestead. So uh, Custer and Reddick, this could be something to keep an eye on with tempers flying the rest of the season. Because we keep talking about Haley Deegan, I'm really impressed with how she's doing this year. Uh, you just got to keep follow the family. They are doing such big things all across motocross and racing. ARCA, she has jumped up to the ARCA series right now. They were in Kansas. Uh, final race of the year, Christian Eckes with the win. And by winning this, he is your point season champion. So congratulations to Christian Eckes, Michael Self second, Ty Majeski third, Brett Holmes fourth, and Travis Brandon fifth. Haley Deegan did finish eighth in this. Tanner Gray, the former pro stock NHRA champion who also made the switch over to circle track, uh, finished sixth. Tanner Gray is getting better and better. He is also, I believe he's tw maybe 20. He's a very young man. Went into NHRA, uh, won the championship at Pro Stock, and then wanted to go to Circle Track. Uh, Tanner Gray is going to get better and better, as is Haley Deegan. Here's a look at your race week ahead, brought to you by All Parts Auto Salvage. Two locations in Springfield, 2600 North Benton and 425 East Kearney. It is beautiful outside today. There are not going to be a whole lot of weekends left that have this kind of weather where it's 75 degrees, you can get outside and work on your car. You know there's those things you've been waiting, thinking, man, one the first nice day I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna fix that. Well, one of these days you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be cold and yucky and you're gonna think, man, I wish I'd have done that back when it was nice. Don't get caught, whether it's batteries, tires, bumpers, 
alternators, no matter what it is you need, All Parts Auto Salvage can get you back on the road. So let Alton and his crew help you fix your car. All Parts Auto Salvage, two locations in Springfield. If you've not yet gone over and checked out the Hoosier Tire Arena Cross National Series, I ask you to please do so. A lot of great information there, including the schedule, the track map for the race coming up next month in Des Coines, Illinois. Uh, the 2019-2020 Hoosier Tire Arena Cross National Series is going to be the biggest and best ever. Uh, the richest riders meeting in the world. There's going to be so many giveaways at that. Really looking forward to being part of this. It's a great opportunity. Also, uh, at the February event will be the unveiling of the inaugural class of the Missouri Motocross Hall of Fame, uh, representing motocross, freestyle, and BMX racers uh, in the history of the state of Missouri. Look forward to that. In a few weeks, those uh, inaugural class will be named. So we'll, right here on this show, we will uh, announce those recipients of the inaugural class of the 2020 Missouri Motocross Hall of Fame. So be sure and check that out. Go over and check out that page as well as the Hoosier Tire Arena Cross National Series. Thank you for joining us here. We'll see you back next week for ORP TV. I'm Stag.